Hello coaches, welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. My name is Kim Cafino and my goal is to help you coach better. After decades as a teacher and coach in international schools, I founded my company, Eduro Learning, to help you embrace your inner leader and make a bigger impact in your school setting as a teacher, a coach, or a leader. I work with clients around the world through our certificate programs and our private mentoring packages, and today's episode features some of my amazing clients. If you have a topic you'd like to hear us talk about or a guest you'd like to see featured, please leave a comment below or join our Coach Better Facebook group or find us on social media at Eduro Learning and send me a DM. Today, we have a fantastic panel episode featuring four experienced coaches who have recently been recruiting for coaching or leadership positions. This spotlight specifically focuses on recruiting red and green flags so you can find the right fit for you in a new school. I'm so happy to be sharing this episode with you because I've worked with several of our panel guests throughout the recruitment process and it's wonderful to see how successful they have been and I'm so grateful to be given the opportunity to share what they've learned during that process. As you may know, the past few years have been pretty intense in terms of recruiting, and all of our guests today have valuable insights to share from their experience. Annalie Higginbottom, Ian Craig, Carrie Hart, and Jordan Benedict have all been through the recruiting process in the last year and have lots to share about red and green flags, in particular for coaching and leadership positions. In the full podcast episode, we talk about the interviewing process over the last year or so, how coaching is changing in international schools right now and one piece of advice for those ready to recruit this year. To listen to the full episode, subscribe to Coach Better wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel here to catch all of our latest episodes. And after the show, head over to Coach Better TV to get all of our resources for instructional coaches. When you are looking, when you're looking to move to a new school and all of you have kind of like varying states of what you were looking for and maybe what you were considering at the beginning of the recruiting process this year and and towards the end of the recruiting process and how that all went. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're looking for? What are the things maybe that are important to you in a new school? You could even talk a little bit about how you know if that school is the right fit for you. I'd love to hear what is essential for you as you are in the recruiting process. And I'll start with Carrie and then go to Ian and then Annalie and then Jordan. So um, I, that's an interesting question because I wasn't sure. And I actually booked um, a meeting with Kim to um, coach me through that conversation because I had lots of like, do I want a coach? Do I want a coordinator? Do I want a tech integrationist? What do I want to do? And through a series of questions that you asked me, we sort of realized that the culture of the school was more important for where I was going and the culture of growth and, um, and willingness to change. Um, and when I was actually um, recruiting, when I was looking at websites and I was looking at information, it didn't seem to phase me if there was no current coaching program. And I think that has to do with the fact that at each school that I've gone, the, my last two moves, I've create, developed a program. And so the idea of developing a program didn't, didn't stress me out, didn't scare me, didn't worry me. And at AAS, we developed the coaching element of our coaching program. So we had a very um, stable tech integration program in the elementary school and the elementary school team um, decided to Um, employ five coaches. We had two part-time literacy, a math and two tech or one tech, one innovation. And so I've been a part of that process. And so it, that didn't stress me out. What I was looking for though, is a school that had a, a, you could tell that there was a growth mindset or an openness to change. Um, And that is something that's actually very difficult to discover because most schools tech pages are 
really short and not give you, do not give you a lot of information. Um, so I actually spent most of my time finding that information in other sources, Twitter, Instagram, going on their websites, going <clears throat> quite often you find a tech page that links to a um, sort of intranet tech hub thing um, from school. So you go to their tech website, that's their, you know, like official school, this is how we feel about tech. And then buried somewhere in there is some little thing that's like some tech, um, internal tech website. And when you get on that, you can find the names of like their maker spaces or their um, innovation centers or their robotics clubs or things like that. And you can sort of find them on social media sometimes. And so that's one of the, you know, like back end ways. It's, it's a lot of time, but I'm a geek, so it works for me. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so that was an important element for me. Um, and the other thing is having a huge PLN network. I have people who, um, Ian was one of them. So I'm asking him whether he knows this school know about, you know, what do you know about, you know, this school or what do you know about anybody at this school? And and I have a, um, uh, my friend, Sarah, you know, I'd message her and be like, what do you know about this school and this kind of thing. So also being heavily involved with um, like uh, John Mickton's Facebook group and some of the other Twitter groups and stuff. I see schools come through there because like CISA, their organizational um, uh, Facebook page will occasionally like fling something that's from a school to the, to their feed. And so um, you see, it, you see stuff that way. So you kind of know which schools to sort of dig deeper and look for and which schools are really obvious that they don't have necessarily a program that I don't know that having nothing would have deterred me if the conversation had been obvious that they were willing to do it and, and, and create it. That uh, in-depth research on the like finding the Instagram and the Twitter account, I totally do exactly that same thing. And I do it for all sorts of things. And I really appreciate that you like broke it down so people can understand how you can navigate that because schools are trying to share, but it's kind of unlikely that you'd be following a random school on another continent or the other side of the world, but you can find so much about the day-to-day -day life of a school once you follow their social media account. Side note, while you were talking about that, I was also thinking about how I do that to find gyms when I travel. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I, I mean, I, I do that for personal reasons, which yes. is probably why it was so natural to me. Yeah. The other thing, and I, I actually was going to start with this and then I, you, you led me to something else with the question was you have to, it's, it's a, it's a masterclass in keyword searching when you want to search for a coach role. Um, when you're on um, GRC, Search, ISS, or any of the other ones, you have to do a masterclass in what are all the possible words that someone might use for the title of coach or something that's like a coach in a school in order to find the positions. So it's sort of, a you know, that's part of the, it's not as clear as assistant principal, principal, teacher you know, uh, curriculum coordinator. It's it's even more vague than curriculum coordinators or curriculum, you know, specialists um, or data. I'm sure the data ones are as, as equally vague, but it it really is a keyword search. You you spend a lot of time looking for ICT teacher, ICT coach, ICT in technologist, you know, like all these weird little keyword searches to find something that might resemble what you were talking about, because I mean, the, the one I'm going into has the word facilitator. I haven't ever seen that before. So like you, you have to play around and, and really read, try to find that those social media accounts sometimes can help you figure out what that position actually is. So you can figure out if that's the one you're thinking of, or if it's a completely different thing altogether. Absolutely. Ian, what is, what are you looking for when you transition into a new school? What indicators does the school give you when you're in that interview process that it feels like a right fit? What is it that you're kind of keeping your eyes peeled for? Thanks, Kim. Uh, you know, I find that that the most successful coaching programs or the places where I feel that there's a lot of great growth in, in that concept is are, are places that are that have good relationships, right? So when I'm in these interviews, 
I'm actually reading the room uh, as much as I would when I when I'm out in the school actually coaching with with teachers, students, and leadership. I'm looking at the leadership specifically, the people that I'm interviewing with. Often you're interviewing with a, a director of technology or a director of teaching and learning. And I'm watching how they play off of the other leadership in the room. Are they simply reading a sheet of questions that have been you know, pre-prepared and they're just going through the motions with the next candidate? Or are the is the director of curriculum, director of tech, is that person having a bit of a banter with the school leadership who are also in that interview? You know, to me, that relationship, like, do are they willing to kind of let the guard down or is it all black and white for them in the, when we're in that room together? And I, I've been through some interesting ones in the last month, even where it's like, I'm not sure that these two people who are inter- interviewing me actually talk to each other on a regular basis. And I actually drive forward with questions about that. And when they turn it over to me and say, what are your questions? I'm like, how often do you all talk to each other? You know, like, uh, are they gathering? Are they, how often does the position I'm recruiting for engage with both you, the director of tech, the director of curriculum and the director of the school? Because I, I like, and I thrive in places where I'm able to develop meaningful relationships with just about everyone. And if I am getting a vibe through these interviews that the director is somebody who's in an office with the door closed and taking care of the business at school and may not even know my name or the fact that I exist, like that's a red flag for me. And so I look for that. And then if we go into a second round where, where we're down talking with divisional leaders or um, other tech team people, I'm looking to see how they're engaging with each other and how they're engaging with me. Are we, are we joking? Are we smiling? Do we have a brief moment where we get to geek out a little bit? You know, one of the things that it, it, in, during the interview with the school that I actually accepted a position with was that we totally, like the elementary principal and I, who used to be a curriculum coordinator, totally had this moment on the side where we were just like geeking out and talking about what Welcome Back Week would look like and how we might make that engaging and meaningful for everyone in the institution, as opposed to specific groups around a specific goal that we have. Like, how do we just welcome people back and and not, you know, push people right towards some massive school-wide initiative? But how do you like say, look, we're going to have a year of growth together. And so for me, I look for that, that engaging relationship piece. Um, I do a bit of the work that Carrie talked about in trying to figure out like what the role actually is, but you know, by golly, if there's, you know, it's like the, the, the titles that they give us now as tech or curriculum people can be absolutely anything, you know, and, uh, you know, to one of your questions that you have later down on the, on the, the docket for today, it's, it's also, where do, where am I at in, in my life and in my career? Like, what do I need to be at? Do I have this, this uh, hang up where I am <clears throat> only seeking leadership positions? Am I willing to seek the positions that have both uh, or entertain the positions that have both a teaching component and a coaching cord or, or a coordination component? You know, at one point I found myself years and years ago as the K-12 uh, director of tech or tech coordinator for the school, managing a team of IT people and teaching eight sections of grades six through 12 uh, IT classes at the time. And you're like, you know, I wasn't very effective or efficient at anything. It was damage control and moving forward. But you know what? If the quality of life at the school is great in the city where the school is and the, you know, the, the finances work out for my family and everybody seems to be having a good time, then I'm okay with all of that chaos. It, you know, it all depends on, on just the vibe of the room. As I go back to that constantly, like, am I getting warm Like, yeah, we're going to be a good team together. Or am I getting, okay, you're the director and I'm the coach and you're going to tell me to go coach because I've had that in my past and it can be extremely isolating and frustrating and you feel like you're siloed. And that, uh, those are, those are flags that I look for uh, in the way that the people engage with each other. Really appreciate appreciate that. And I really appreciate that you have to be like operating on two different levels when you're thinking about uh, going through the interview process because you're wanting to answer the question and present yourself obviously in the best possible light, but you're also evaluating how those questions are being asked and the interaction amongst the people that are doing the asking. And when I think back on my interview experience, as you were talking, I was like, oh yeah, I remember this and I remember that. And um you know, maybe I noticed in the moment, but I didn't do the investigation at the time that I probably should have. So that's great. 
Um, Anna Lee, tell us a little bit about your kind of what indicates for you that it's a right fit. What are you looking for? What do you have your eyes peeled for when you're transitioning to a new school in that interview process? So I think Ian and Kerry kind of um, touched on this, this idea that we're each coming from a very different place. So what is a green flag for me is going to be a red flag for somebody else because we're prioritizing different things um, at different seasons in our life. Um, And like Carrie, I do a lot of the kind of digging around on the back end because every school puts its mission and vision. Their website is is a marketing tool. And so it's really only by digging into their social media feed and anything that might be loosely connected to that, that you can really begin to get a picture of what those values look like and how they're lived in practice. So I dig around for that. And also like Ian, I'm also looking at what is my experience if I get around to an interview or even if I just submit an application, what is my experience like with these people at this school who could be potential colleagues in the future? Um, Am I able to engage? Am I able to exchange information? Um, And I remember um, having the experience, you know, at one point in my life when I was a a tech coach um, at a very small school in Italy, what I really wanted was to be a tech coach in a larger school and have colleagues so that I wasn't just it. I wasn't the person um, who was responsible for everything um, and responsible for having all the right answers. I wanted to continue on my learning journey as a tech coach. And then over time, it expanded. It, It was about tech coaching. And it was also about what are the other opportunities that this school might present to me, that this community might offer to me, both on a personal level, uh, in terms of where the school's located, what it, what's the financial package, how safe am I going to be as a single female, um, but also the professional. Are there opportunities for me to dig into other professional interests I have, like social emotional learning. And at one of my schools, the school that I've stayed at for longest really allowed me to grow in that area and really supported me in growing in kind of both of those roles. And so this time when I was recruiting, um, I was I was going back and forth because after two years of not seeing my family, I was very determined that I should be much closer to home. So, of course, next year I'm moving to Hong Kong and I'm from Manchester in the north of England. So it makes total sense. Um, But then it became, for me this year, a real balancing act between what is an opportunity that I've been searching for for a long time that I've really wanted to move into versus being closer to home and with the best will in the world, and I, I love being a coach and everything I've learned as a coach, I will seek to take forward into this administration role. Um, but keeping doing the same thing I've been doing for 15 years at three different schools and essentially building or developing programs. So for me, this time around, it, it really came down to what is going to be an opportunity that is really going to help me meet a a personal and professional goal that I've had for a long time. Um, And so that's, that's kind of the leap that I've taken is from coaching now into kind of formal administration and being able to, yes, pull my coaching side with me, but instead really shift my focus to the social emotional aspects of um, being in a school and supporting students to be the best learners that they can. It's so interesting when you started, you were talking about what might be a red flag for you, might be a green flag for someone else and vice versa. And I think it is really interesting to hear just from you so far. And I know Jordan's going to give us another perspective in just a minute on your professional journey. All those things might be interesting to you at different points in your career and being able to pinpoint what exactly it is that is your goal for right now, that is the most important goal and prioritize that goal and not allow yourself to get lost. Because I know it's like, you are all moving during a very tumultuous year. I have never moved during a year like that. I mean, has anyone else ever moved during a year like this? Have we ever had a year like this? But like, I can't imagine the stress of just not knowing if jobs are going to come up, if you're going to be in a place where you can 
like you said, Annalie, be able to travel back and see your family while still keeping the priority of that thing that is your next professional step. I think that's a really, yeah, that's just a really interesting lens to look at. And I know we have tons more to talk about and I want to give Jordan his chance. I don't want to dominate the conversation. So Jordan, tell us about your, what are you looking for when you're moving and what are like those green flags for you? And, and it could be those green flags like right now. Yeah, it could. Well, different than Annalie, I wasn't sure what role that I wanted to go for. So I'm more similar to Ian where I, I was just trying things. And so I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in uh, learning coaching, move towards tech coaching, move towards curriculum leadership. Um, and so I was applying for absolutely everything all over the world, every continent and, and just seeing. And I guess what I would just add on, I would yes and to everything everybody has said. Um, is that I think the JD is was one of my best places of research for these roles. And now a, a school isn't always responsible for the JD. It might be a previous admin who wrote it, but it might really shed some light on the purpose of that role and how people might view that role. And so that was always really helpful for, to me. If it looked like they just stuck everything on the role, that was a little bit of a cautionary flag for me. If instead there were some clear visions around what a coach or what a curriculum director might do, that maybe give me uh, a reason to move forward. But then what I'll say is I took, um, and maybe some of you have done the same, I took a ton of interviews. Like I would take every interview no matter what, if I could get it, because I found that that was where the best um, information came from. So I was trying to get as many interviews as possible. And like Ian, um, I tried to ask a lot of questions to get that vibe for the room. And I'm looking for um, kindness and humility. I'm looking for a service-oriented approach. And, and those are my preferences. Those might not be everybody's preferences. But I think those are the things that helped me a lot was being really deliberate about looking at um, JDs and thinking about each line in the job description. Like what, my, what was the purpose behind that line? And then following that up with questions in the interview sometimes about the job description, which would catch people off as well. But, um, but it, it like give them an opportunity to talk to it as well. But it, it, taking those interviews, um, being able to ask questions back at them and realizing that it's a two-way street, right? They're courting you at the same time that you're courting them. And so asking those questions to get the vibe, the relationship, the vision, and the purpose behind some of what they've put out there was what I, where I spent the most like value of my time was in those areas. As I'm listening to you all, the other thought that keeps coming to my mind is we are dealing with a panel of very experienced international school teachers. Like this is, you've been through this process, all of you more than once. You have worked in significant schools where you have been able to like grow as professionals and develop a better understanding of what makes your work environment right for you. And you are doing exactly what you just said, Jordan, that idea of courting them as they're courting you and, and interviewing them as they're interviewing you. And you mentioned something at the very beginning that you, when you were talking about, like you were trying everything. And I feel like for the most part, except for my most recent jobs early on in my career, I was very much like, let's try anything. I'll go anywhere. Like I'll interview with anyone. Let's see. And it was just very much like, I really didn't know anything that was going on. And the layers that you all are peeling out from being so experienced in this process and maybe even having I don't know if it's like the distance of being able to do this um, through Zoom. So it's not like my only interview experiences in my professional career were all in person because it was before we had this kind of environment all the time. Right. So like I'm, I'm wondering if there's even an element of the fact that Zoom allows you to talk to even more people and spread it out over time. And you're not doing it in, you know, I remember going into at one point a job fair and saying, I, we must go to Dubai. That's where I want to go. I'm determined to live in Dubai. I had something like nine job offers in Dubai. Did we go to Dubai? No, I've never lived in Dubai. Visited once, you know, we ended up going to Malaysia. And I remember that feeling of whiplash from, you know, like 8 a.m. when you're walking around with your resume around the table to, you know, 3 p.m. and being like, well, oh, okay, we thought I was going to the desert. I guess we're going to the jungle. Like just kind of that's what happened. And feeling like I almost wasn't in control of it and hearing all of you, it's so clear that you're so in control of the process, even if that is not how it felt. 
I think that you probably have a lot more control because of your experience and because you have that prioritization and because you have that recognition that you want to find the right school for you. I don't know that's what I'm taking away. Hey there, are you recruiting for a coaching position this year? Join us for the next cohort of the Coach Certificate and Mentorship Program. You'll learn everything you need to be successful as a K-12 instructional coach with an entire academic year of curated coaching content, plus the support of a mentor to adapt your learning to exactly your needs and experience level for the entire program. So if this is the year you're considering moving into a coaching role, recruiting for a new job, you'll have the support of a mentor as you go through that process. Inside our private learning community, you'll also learn with a global cohort of coaches from international public and private schools around the world. So you can see how coaching really works in practice and build your network of coaches that might help you get that next job. Our global cohorts open only once a year and our next cohort registration begins soon. So head over to adurolearning.com slash coach to find out more. At Eduro Learning, teachers become leaders. Whatever your role in schools, you are so much more than just a teacher. As an educator, you have built an amazing skill set that goes far beyond the classroom, and you deserve professional learning that does more than just tick a box. It's time to end that cycle of one size fits all, barely there, minimum PD, and get professional learning that's customized just for you. Join us for one of our annual global cohorts of The Coach, Women Who Lead, or Coattail to see how our community-driven, personalized certificate programs will help you build the confidence to embrace your inner leader to make a bigger impact in your school setting. You deserve to be at the heart of your professional learning experiences. If you prefer to get started with something right now, we've also got self-paced courses where you can earn recertification credits, private mentoring packages that we can customize just for you, and downloadable workbooks you can jump into right away. Find it all at edurolearning.com. Plus, join our Coach Better Facebook group and connect with us on social media for more great resources at the intersection of technology, coaching, and leadership. I'd love to hear from you, no matter where you're at in your professional journey, to see how I can help you move forward. Send me a DM and let's start a conversation. See you next time.